Okay, this is Elijah Ignatieff of Planetary Guardians number three media training with Daniil and Matthew and we're missing a one one of our members has dropped out and one isn't feeling well. So we just have the three of us right now. And uh, why don't we have a bit of a check in? Why don't you say sort of where you're at and uh, what's happened during the week? Anything significant that you might have learned in terms of an insight about anything that's occurring? Mm -hmm. I'm definitely learning to trust the cycles more and the intuition and the feelings more. <clears throat> and with your maps, I'm able to apply words to different parts of your map, which as you explain, allow us, allow me to sort of communicate with myself <clears throat> in a way I've never done. So this past week, just to check in where I'm at in my like business life, which really is like my social life these days, there's like a huge wave of movement, kind of like a river, like a huge movement of, of energy and water. And it's bumping up against other movements of water, but they're all going in the same direction, downstream, I would assume. And, and it's like, those are the collaborators, even yourself, Elijah, like we're all gaining momentum right now and becoming part of each other and still yet these little separate streams. So I feel checking in that, um, having systems like this. Uh, I have a lot of systems in my life. In fact, I, I am not addicted to systems, but certainly I rely on them to do what I do in my time space dimension. Um, so it's looking back on this last week, I'm very grateful for systems, including this mapping systems, because without it, I couldn't hold it all up. At least I don't think I could. Yeah, that's my check-in. Right, thank you. Uh, Daniil. <clears throat> Um, I think my, my observations are simpler and not really related to the system. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I've been exercising more regularly and that seems to be having a positive effect on my energy and mental attitude because I, I was finding I was slightly dipping into depression uh, about two or three weeks ago. And I haven't retaken the, because there's questions that you can do to kind of assess yourself. Uh, and I've come out with mild, mild depression. So I, I feel like that is reversing. But I'm crediting that to exercise for the moment. That's a check-in? Yep. <laughs> well, didn't you say that you're two months in your company and you still haven't met anyone face-to-face? Uh, not all of them those I met through the interview process, no. <laughs> Must be a little strange to... Uh... It is. And so you're communicating with everyone online? Yep. And Lots of Zoom. Lots of Zoom. So you are meeting them. You are seeing them face-to-face. -face. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And how are the endeavors going? Um, pretty well. Um, you know, I've, I've got a lot of confidence in the CEO. This is his third company. I think I mentioned to you in our first call that he sold his first company, his second one IPO'd in January. Um, so he seems to know what he's doing. Okay, so uh, we had an exercise to do. It was to make your first flow map, the inflow matrix. And there's, did you get in the, I sent you an email that had Ken Wilber's four quadrants and the values glossary. Did yep. you get that, Matthew? I did. I don't think I looked at it, though, my friend. I was thinking I might um, pop in here. Yeah. So I'll share the screen. Da -da 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 -da. Actually, I've, I've seen this before. I, I think... I, I read like, Ken Wilber's summary doc, uh, book, his, his oh, you did? With lots of pictures, and I started Spiral Dynamics and just couldn't digest it. Okay. Uh, and there may be another one, I can't remember. Okay, so this to me is, a, so can you see that? Yep. So what, one thing I'd like to point out about this is, is just seeing the same model in three information graphics and a big thing that I've been doing with playing with conceptual models is looking at different kind of ways that you can organize information and it's, it's the same 
sort of way, but it's very different because when you look at it this way, you look at the individual and the group, the inner and the outer, that the space here, like the individual consciousness is being programmed by the inner and the individual. So the space in the model comes from two axes and those two concepts. And so what I saw was, I mean, it's just interesting that space is being programmed by the, by the, by where things go in a model that may seem obvious or simple, but it's, I think it, it's very important. And what Ken Wilbur saw was he, he had put all these maps from all these traditions and he was trying to find how they all came together. And he came up with this model, which was so pretty much simple, but no one, I, I think had done it before, at least not that I know of, of looking at the individual in the group, the inner and the outer. And when you put them together into the quadrants, you have the inner individual and the outer individual, the inner group and the outer group. And so when you look at it from the circle point of view, right here, now you're getting more, the inner individual is on the inside and then it's outside and then it's the group and then it's the community. And then if you look at it from down here, and this is looking more kind of inflow matrix style, if you, can you see where my cursor is here? Yep. So if you put your eyeball there and you're, and you're again, you're looking through a telescope. What I saw was like a language telescope where you'd have a lens that was the inner you, you'd have a lens that was the outer you, you'd have a lens that was the group, and then you have a lens that's in the community. And so to me, it was the beginning of something I've called a language telescope, where you're putting lenses into this telescope, a conceptual telescope to see something. And so then in the operating system, each one of these colors represents a wheel. So the choice wheel is your inner individual. The outer individual is your flow wheel. Your inner group is your synergy wheel. And your outer group is your harmony wheel. Now within the inflow matrix, those four words, choice, flow, synergy, and harmony are like the four main reference points for this whole idea. Looking at that, you know, for you, the inside of you, what every human being needs is your free choice. And then your outer you, your highest expression of you in business, your highest expression of you in a sport, your highest expression of you is the flow state. It's like when you get into that timeless state, have you, any of you read that book by Mikhail Siska Halaha? He's got a very long European name, but there's a book called Flow. And if you've okay, never read it, familiar with the concept. Yeah, his book is a brilliant book, and it's it's pretty much he was the guy who put flow on the map. And if you want to do some deeper reading, Matthew, uh, I would definitely recommend that as a very strong book. And then synergy is at the next level. That's in the group, and that's you know when the parts come together and you have a whole that you have a synergy between the parts that you get access to an energy that you wouldn't ordinarily get by just having independent parts. And Stephen Covey was very big about that in his seven habits for highly effective people. And then the next thing is harmony at the community perspective of looking at, you know, if you're, if you have your choice and you're in the flow and you're on a team in synergy, then you want to be in harmony with the community around you. And so if you have these four concepts, generally you're going to be doing pretty good. And so the main interfaces for the inflow matrix are these four levels. I'm struggling that, a little bit. Can, can you just take a simple example and apply the inner individual and outer individual lenses to it just so I can see the difference? I think I understand like my view, the group view, the community view, but this okay. is I'm struggling with a little bit. Okay, let me just get a... I think we're most people these days are uh, familiar with the idea of lenses, right? I, I see it's entered into the lexicon for people. Um, and so what we have here is we have this uh, choice deck cards. Mm -hmm. We have a flow deck of cards. 
and we have a synergy deck of cards and a, and a harmony deck of cards. So you're asking for a choice and a flow, and I'll just randomly choose here. So, well, I mean, so I guess to start with, I'm, I'm not quite sure how in, inner individual corresponds to choice and outer individual corresponds to flow. I, I, just, I thought you just described those two elements acting as lenses on presumably any issue or, or point that you like. Yeah. I'm just trying to differentiate between those two. Okay, so basically, right, how do you make a decision? You're, you're using your mind to make some sort of choice mm -hmm. in some manner, right? So that's, yep. in, that's inside of you. Yes. Right? It's just you. Yep. Now the flow is like, if I'm playing basketball, it's my outer expression. Like the flow state is the highest work performance state or the highest sports state. Okay. So basically what they say is there's certain components. You need a goal. You enter into timelessness and you get feedback. So you're, whatever you're doing, you're sort of in this high state, you're getting the feedback, but you're trying to attain something and you lose your mind. You're not thinking about it anymore. And that's what the flow is. It's like a musician when they're playing, basketball player when they're playing. So how is that the outer individual though? Because that still sounds like the inner individual to me. Your flow state is still in your mind. It's well, to you. To me, to me it, it's, it's more, the flow has a lot to do with your body. Okay. Like, like if you're just in your mind, you can be thinking about things. It doesn't mean you're experiencing the feeling of flow. Okay, so it's in your mind versus in your body? Yes, because the okay. outer you, like w when I'm looking at you, the, the I'm looking at room. the outer you. Okay. I'm just seeing the physical you, but, in, but I know that inside of you, there's this whole world and that is not usually taken into account, you know, in businesses or, or in so many arenas, they leave out that inner world. It's interesting because I feel like I focus on the inner individual most of the time and the outer is almost irrelevant. I, I was having a conversation with my parents and I happened to mention that my new boss is, is Chinese ethnically and they said, oh, I didn't imagine him as Chinese. You might have mentioned that before. And I was thinking to myself, that's because it's utterly irrelevant. That's why I never mentioned it. Mm -hmm. It's about him and his qualities, like back to what he looks like, just doesn't matter. Huh. Well, that's probably why you're a good operations manager, because you're, you're, you're going to the inside of what the real mm -hmm. problems are. You're hired. Yeah. Higher so does that, does that explain? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Yeah, and, that, and, that makes it a lot clearer. And so then what happens is you have, let's say, here's a flow lens, and here's a... Uh, an inner lens, so resource cost. So you start, which is different from, let's say, um, resource demographics, which is different from resource, uh, oh, the wrong one, individuality. So it's, it's, it, it creates these, these patterns where you start to bring the words together. And what's very different about having words on on cards is it takes you out of the fixed static representation of that card in a sentence or a paragraph or a page and it gives you ability to move the cards around to make patterns and so then when you place these patterns on a sacred geometry object like we're doing with the flow wheel we're giving the mind a form or a structure to put the pattern on but then like, like a doctor, an eye doctor with eyeglasses, you can change the lenses and then you, it's, it's like giving a new skill to the mind to change how you view something by looking at what a word really is and it's just a symbol. It reminds me of a concept. There was a, I think there was a French guy who focused on memory, but he had, he had this hat theory, colored hats that you would put on and take off for different- Edward de Bono. That's the one. Yeah, is, is it similar kind of concept? Obviously his particular application is different, but it was, that to me was applying different lenses depending on the hat you had on. Just a different metaphor. Definitely, I mean, you could have a choice lens of role, and I think what he was doing, he was changing the roles with yeah. the hats. It was the, the creative guy, the, the completer finisher, the critic. Yeah, it was brilliant. I love, Edward de Bono, I found, had one of the best understandings of the mind 
than anyone I'd come across in my research. Yeah, I read most of his books when I was about 15. It was really interesting. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. I, mean, that's, I just came across in the library and thought, huh, this is interesting. That, that's, what, was the, what was the, I mean, the Six Hats is very important, but there was one book that just explained the mind. Like, I mean, one of the things that he explained was catchment basins. It's like the word terrorist. I'd have this word at the bottom, but then anything that came near this word would be sucked into it. And, and that was a way of kind of scamming people because it was just this huge catchment basin that was so general. Um, okay, so shall we go to the flow wheel? Yes. Uh, would you like to share? Um, let me get a pen because I want to write these things down. And who, who wants to go first? I'll go first since I'm already yapping. Um, so I'll, I'll just go around starting at one. So okay, I had... Let me just get my pen going here. Sure. Okay. Number one was detachment, pressure in two, eloquence in three. Wait, detachment, pressure two. <laughs> okay. Eloquence in three. Okay. Conformity in four. Okay. Uh, humility in five. Okay. Habit in six. Okay. Chaos in seven. Okay. Gratitude in eight. Thanks. Okay. Enthusiasm in nine. Okay. And courage in the middle. Courage in the middle. Okay. Okay. And can you tell us how, how you did that? At random. That, that I, random. I decided everything else had been chosen. So I thought, let me just introduce some chaos and see what happens. Oh my, so, so did you take the values from the glossary I sent you? Yeah, I did. So I wanted to, to pull values that I wouldn't, I don't want to use the same ones over and over. I know the ones that I think are important to me. Okay. Uh, so I kind of, I didn't just, I didn't choose the values at random, but I, so I chose ones that I thought might be interesting. Um, <laughs> but I, I didn't have any sort of system. It was just ones that jumped out at me. And, okay, and did you set an intention for the map? No. Okay, you might want to do that right now and, okay. have, a, and have a primary intention for this map. What's an example of an intention? Well, it might be to, um, to uncover all the blocks within me that stop me from enlightenment. It might be to become enlightened. It might be to be the best operations officer in this job. It might be how do I find my lover? It might be how do I make a million dollars? It might be how do I make a, be the richest man on the planet? Um, it might be you know how do I completely destroy my mind so that my soul's essence can come through? Those are some varied objectives. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm doing that. Why, why doesn't Matthew go? <laughs> okay, so you come up with your intention, and uh, Matthew. I was getting all excited by those words, enlightenment. Oh yeah, let's pump the biceps. Okay. <laughs> That's usually the way. <laughs> Didn't Buddha say that? You know, you gotta, you gotta pump the biceps to achieve nirvana. Yeah, one more rep, baby. Enlightenment is one more rep away. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna play the game here. And I did just choose the, um, the values onto my map in, not randomly this time. I actually sort of went oh, for it. Okay. And um, I mean, it's not pure thought. It's not all logic, but I did look. Okay. So starting with number one is the lifetime cycle. Okay. I got living in the moment. The <laughs> Sorry, I know you're not supposed to laugh, but it's the longest time cycle, right? And you're, yeah. I'm <laughs> right now, no matter what. <laughs> okay. The yearly cycle is opulent thinking. Oh, man. And then the lunar cycle is dynamic learning experiences. Okay. Also known as learning. <laughs> Matthew learning. The daily, oh, sorry. Yep. 
Daily cycle is the word reliability. And then the seasonal cycle is um, results oriented or maybe just results. Okay. Nice. The hourly cycle is collaboration. Nice. And the minute cycle is the word legacy. It's at what, the seven? Yes. Shoot, okay. <laughs> and, and then <clears throat> present moment is um, number eight is virtues and principles. Timelessness got the word beauty. And then, yeah, you said 10. Um, so I have one more. Is that for the middle? Yeah. It's possibility. Possibility. Nice. It rules them all. Okay. So this is new. I mean, usually I always stick to one word with things and, and kind of, uh, but I've, I've learned over time that I, I think anything can fit anywhere. And that's just my own little. Thing. And I think these are these are things you've chosen specifically as your own values for your business, eh? Is that yeah, they're showing up as like brand values, yeah. Okay. Okay, so tell me also, right? You did you have the flow like you have the living in the moment at the field, opulent thinking at resources, dynamic learning experiences at job, reliability activities, results oriented at gift, collaboration at relationships, legacy at path, virtues and principles at strategies beauty at agreements and possibility conversations you guys did you just put it on the time translator or did you also put it the, the flow words i don't know oh i understand what you're saying hmm i haven't done that yet with the flow words okay because that's that's interesting to look at because essentially there's three things right there's the time cycle there's the value and then there's the concept so what you did last week is you put the time cycle and then you put the concepts on top of it. And now what you're doing is you're empowered, like the, the concepts are your attention and your values are your intention. So like your, your intention, your heart energy comes through your values, but the mind is guiding it by using these words. Yeah, well, you, when I just did this intentionally, I was matching it more to the words than the cycle time. Okay. Okay. But it's good to look at both because, uh, again, you have pressure a year, right? Well, not, now I have pressure by minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. You changed that. Okay. And where did oh, the more, uh, the ones I struggle with most are most are paths and field. Cause I feel like they're much less clear than everything else. Okay. Did you, where did you put chaos? Chaos is against relationships. Oh my God. Are you, Okay, <laughs> you're, you're going to come at me and, and you may try to kill me once this comes into being. Man. Okay, so then what's, what's it uh, yearly? Uh, okay, can, can I just do this in order? It might be easier than jumping yeah. around. Okay, so if I start at, the, at, at one, lifetime. So I had humility against field. I thought you had humility at, at gift. You had detachment at field. No, no, but you asked me to do it intentionally. So I took them all off and put oh. them back on again. Well, no, I, I asked, what was your intention? As well, there, the, there wasn't, oh, well, there wasn't one last time. I did it randomly. That was the whole point. Okay. This, this time, my intention was, how do I be successful in my new job? Okay, that's a good one. So, you, you, okay, so you got a whole new value system here. Yeah. Well, I mean, I took the same values that I had. Yeah. That were chosen randomly and then assigned them as best I could. Okay. Okay. Okay, give it to me. Okay, so I've got humility against field, which I still haven't really worked out what that means yet. That's okay. probably the, the least clear one. I've got conformity against resources. Okay. Enthusiasm against job. Nice. Habit against activities. Nice. Gratitude against gifts. Nice. Chaos against relationships. <laughs> Pressure okay. on paths. Oh, no, okay. Courage on strategies. Okay. Detachment on agreements. Oh, nice. And eloquence in conversations. Nice. <laughs> it's funny, like, maybe I shouldn't uh, give any feedback when, you know, you're kind of like, nice, nice. Oh, that's, oh, 
what are you going to do? But that, that, but to me, that is actually one of the biggest values of the system, Elijah, which is hearing things that I wouldn't normally put together and seeing what my brain can make of it. Now, sometimes that's nothing. Right. Other times I'm like, well, and the reason that I, I put chaos, for example, with relationships was I feel like I'm a, a very known and reliable quantity with people I engage with professionally and socially, and that has a lot of value. But if I could, I feel like part of the value people get from me is that I do inspire new ideas in them, get challenge them on the way that they're thinking about things. And the chaos would be kind of throwing more maybe random questions in there or just taking things not necessarily in the direction that I can see where it's going to go, but just opening a new path and going with them rather than just guiding them along it because I think I know the answer. Right. Well, and it's also valuing. It's kind of like, I guess, as an operations officer at that minute to minute, your like operations to me is kind of like in the daily cycle a lot, like within the inflow mm -hmm. that within the synergy wheel, it's more daily actions. But the minute to minute is, is like when like the a time well, that's crunch is on. pressure is, is minute to minute. Oh, pressure. Okay. And you got chaos at six. Well, I'm just thinking of both of those together where you got the chaos of the relationship and the pressure of the minute, it's basically it's like Star Trek when you're in the middle of, you know, high red alert, you know, <laughs> and, uh, right. But I mean, I am in a startup, right. And there is a, getting that if, combined with enthusiasm for job pressure on just in, in a good way, driving positive pressure to get results, to, to make decisions quickly, to move forward, I think is really very valuable and actually in all companies, but particularly in startups. So, so I'm, I'm wondering something, would you, are you tempted or would you bring this kind of value system into that organization? No. <laughs> Not yet. I don't um, mean, yeah, but ever, like, does the, does it strike you as being an, an important, like even the five communication spaces? I, I think it's a useful tool to structure thoughts. So I, about three weeks ago, I shared uh, just the whole concept of vertical development. And I started with the Harvard Business Review article on action logics. And then I, I attached um, Susan Greider, Cook, Cook Greider, I can never remember which way around her name is, the 35 pager on leadership development framework, and then the 90 something pager on ego development theory. And I sent that out and I kind of gave a little spiel about how it might be valuable and, and what it might be used for. Uh, and I've also shared a, a development template with my direct reports. So I'm, I'm trying to see the idea that there's a lot that you can learn that isn't just new knowledge and new skills. You can fundamentally change and, and add to the ways that you think. Um, so I've started people on that process. There'll be different levels of engagement. Some people will just be like, this, this, this is weird. I'm not going to do anything with it. Others will kind of dabble in it. And some people might actually grab it and really kind of run with it. Um, but I feel like trying to introduce it to the whole company um, is probably quite far away. But individuals who grab onto vertical development as a concept, yeah, I could see me sharing this. What, what about your boss? Do you think he'd do it? Um, I think he might. He's... Like, you'd have to run it by him first, right? I would say he's, he's somewhere between uh, a strategist and an ironist or whatever the top level is. He, he's still executive chairman of his previous company. He's running this one. He's got at least 15 direct reports. Uh, as you look at kind of the multi-level operations description and ego development framework, that's tied to the last stage. And he has his challenges that make me think, you know, in certain areas, he's, he's rather further back. But his like, operational capability is outstanding. No, I just, I'd be very curious to, to see like what someone like that would make of let's say the basic values exercise for the five spaces because i think it does have a simplicity and just to see what he thinks you know yeah um yeah, agreed he fascinated you know anyway um okay so that that to me what do you think about that value system i i think it well with with a few exceptions uh, start to figure out what the heck humility and field would mean um but outside of that, I feel like this just kind of gives me ways to think about things that I can turn into practical behaviors. Um, so courage and strategies, for example, I really liked. We're, we're trying to 
take kind of initial steps but driving towards fundamentally altering the healthcare system in this country courage in those strategies feels like exactly what we need you need to kind of tread a wheel between what can be done but also stretching that probably a little bit beyond what you think is actually possible which to me requires courage especially when you've got it's a business right it's not just a thought exercise right. um so i i think you know as i think about these pairs it will give me another perspective on how i'm approaching my job uh, in these various time cycles each conversation each meeting each day each month um and just think about how these things might apply thank you so matthew um that's great by the way i love it uh, matthew what about you uh, do you want to go deeper into what you got here like i i have a question here on your legacy at the minute and the living in the moment at the light time i almost mm -hmm. think they should be switched but because mm -hmm. legacy usually is the legacy you leave after you die so it makes sense that at lifetime um, and living in the moment is kind of living in the moment so and at the lifetime cycle it's more you're looking at the whole of your life well okay <clears throat> true what i enjoy about the way it is now is i like that to me a minute is like blinking it's really quick and so I found recently in the last, I guess, couple of years, if I can, if I can keep legacy in the forefront, right in front of me at all moments with that thinking, I can bear, how do I say more fruit right? and more, more, more weight. Um, I think of when I do push-ups and I work out, if I have the legacy of what it's building in my muscle, in front of me, I can work more. I can do living in the moment too, when I'm working out. In fact, it's really peaceful and sometimes it's more effective, but I feel more driven by the idea than legacy than living in the moment. Living in the moment to me is like, I'll just sit at the lilac bush and smell the lilac bush and legacy drives me. So that's just the meaning I'm making out of it is I'm enjoying the legacy piece because if I build minute by minute by minute by minute, a legacy is possible. So I'm just coming at it from different angles because that's what's on my on my paper here. I mean, I'm just adapting to it essentially. Um, but I enjoy the feeling it gives me in sort of in my third eye when I think about legacy in that mini in that minute column. I I really feel driven and inspiring when I when I have that energy around my minute cycle. Um, did you put an intention down for your map? You know, just just my company, just the brand. So do you want to sort of like uh, how to bring my brand into the world kind of, or um, is there a specific intention that you can sort of say? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So number three, the lunar cycle is job, which is dynamic learning experiences. And that value is an inside joke with my girlfriend and I, because it's a company value and obviously that's my last name, right? Um, so it's a really funny, cool catch to like the brand because it's my name as the company. So dynamic learning experiences is my job. And the thing is, the problem is that I don't know how to deliver dynamic learning experiences, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'm terrified, not actually, but I, you know, I have a lot to, of gap between who I believe myself to be now in my skills and what's coming in the next five, 10, 20 years as a teacher, just to use that word. So the dynamic learning experiences in the job is just so perfect. And then if I go around the wheel, I mean, as a company, reliability and activities in the daily cycles, everything, at least that's how I live. Um, that's pretty straightforward, at least look for me. Okay, be before going deeper in, I, the question I asked was the same I asked with Daniil was, what is the intention for this map? And do you have a macro kind of intention, like to build my business kind of thing, to build the most creative business? Because each map generally needs an intention. That's sort of like the reference point for how these values and energies are going to be used and vocalized towards.
Hmm. One intention is to find out which ones I can pare down, if any. If I can go from 10 to 8 to 5, maybe, that'd be nice. I don't know. I didn't really set an intention. Do it after. You don't have to do it right now. But I would just like, it's a good idea to have. We're two minutes, so we're counting down. Uh, we have, you know, we started a bit late, and we still have seven minutes. So I'm just wondering how you guys, gentlemen, are feeling. Um, I can open it back up again once it stops, or we can conclude if you feel like you're, you have closure. Up to you guys. I feel closure. Like, I feel good. Complete. Um, happy to dig in more. I think we need to just dig in a little bit more, if you guys don't mind, because I think we started a bit late. Is that fine? Sure. Okay. I'll just close this, and I'll invite you back in again, okay? Okay.